Hi, everyone. Welcome to Kiki and Kibitz. It's Mary, and I'm here today with a special exclusive interview. Now, I've been doing the deep dive into Kyle Gordy from Love and Paradise, you know, falling into the rabbit hole. I've already done two videos about what, um, what I found out about him by doing a simple Google search. Now, I want to introduce you guys to Jen. And Jen has a lot of experience with Kyle and actually was one of her videos that I found and fell deeper into the rabbit hole. So Jen, thank you for joining me. How are you today? I am doing okay. Thank you for having me, Mary. I appreciate so, it. I want to start off with what is your relationship with Kyle Gordy? Currently, uh, he is... Well, he is the, I used him as the sperm donor for, to get pregnant with my daughter. So he's the biological father of my daughter. Um, as far as our relationship, I have him blocked on social media. So there is no, dis, no talking, no relationship whatsoever. So basically he's the biological father of your dad, of, of your daughter, and that's it. That's, that's it. Okay. So. Would you tell me how you first met Kyle and when? Yes. So I, this was back in August, 2022. Okay. Um, I had just turned 40 that previous May. I was, um, you know, looking into potentially using a sperm donor. I didn't like the idea of using a sperm bank. I had listened to some donor conceived perspectives. They all say use a known donor. I wanted my daughter to know who she came from. Essentially, I wanted her have I wanted her to have that history, that connection, some type of potential relationship. And so I went on Facebook <laughs> to um I don't know, just kind of, you know, see what was out there. And when I first got on, I was looking to some donor conceived perspective groups. And when I did that, I also came across these uh, Facebook sperm donor groups. Okay. And so they are, um, it's essentially a group for people to meet, right? Recipient parents and private sperm donors, freelance sperm donors, whatever we want to call them. Uh, have created these groups. They hang out in these groups. And um, I had found one that was, I believe it was based in California. And so I joined the group, um, had made a post on the, like every week they'll say, you know, who's, you know, what recipients are out there, where are you located, et cetera, et cetera. And so I had made a post on one of these threads. Um, and within, you know, a couple of days, I received a message from Kyle. Okay. Uh, he had presented himself as the admin of the group. Okay. Okay. So how, what, what were some of the qualities that attracted you to Kyle initially? <laughs> oh, his excitement. Okay. The, so for me, it was, um, you know, he came in and he was kind of like, you know, he was goofy. He had this kind of like weird, goofy energy. And, and I was, you know, excited about this potential and just kind of in a happy go lucky type playful mood. Okay. Um, and so it's just entertaining it, right. Entertaining him. He sent me some pictures of his donor conceived children, um, cute kids. Uh, and so I was like, okay, Kyle, let's, let's see what's here, you know? Right. So uh, he was kind of selling himself to you. He was selling himself 100%. Right. Right. Yes. right. So how long did you communicate with him before you met him in person? So we had three video calls okay. um, and we were communicating also through Facebook messenger for a couple weeks. I would okay. say he was in the UK at the time. Um, so the plan was when he got back to the Los Angeles area, we were going to meet and we were actually going to do some German show, some German film crew was going to come out, film him, do some of filming him doing some of his donations or like, you know, whatever he does. Right. And so what we had talked about was that we were going to meet in Santa Monica at the pier. And we were going to be filmed essentially like our first meeting. Oh, okay. Um, now we had 
you know, very early on in our discussion, I had opened up to him about, you know, the fact that, yes, I'm doing this single mom by choice. You know, I, I already was a single mom. I have a 12 year old son. Um, I turned 40 relationships weren't working out. And so this was essentially what I wanted to do. Um, I said, in the grand scheme of things, I'm looking for a partner, you know, a life partner, just sharing that being transparent with him, obviously, since he's going to be donating, um, his sperm to me. And, uh, he immediately latched on to that and said, well, I'm looking for a life partner too. So that was an opening for this potential relationship, you know, maybe moving beyond just the sperm donor recipient type relationship. Right. Okay. So once you met him in person, how long was it before conception? Oh, a couple weeks. So okay. we met um, just before I had started, like it was at the end of my cycle. <laughs> That's how I remember it. So at the end of my cycle, and um, it was meant to just be like a exploration of our connection, I guess you could say, and see what was there. Okay. So um, for my viewers that are, that don't have knowledge on this, because I did a deep dive. So I know what's the difference between yeah. a sperm bank and going the private sperm, sperm donor way. So um, going through a sperm bank, you're going to pay a lot of money uh, for vials of sperm. Now, I am not the expert on sperm bank protocols or anything like that, but I have learned a lot over the last couple of years. Um, so, you know, at sperm bank, you're, you're going to get the vials. You're going to look through a bunch of different donor profiles. Some of them have pictures. Some of them don't. Most of them are childhood pictures, right? So you don't see the adult pictures. Um, they'll have like a health history information about, you know, height, weight, right? All those, uh, characteristics, a little bit about what they do, you know, athletic build, or they're an engineer or whatever it may be. Um, and then you look through those, these profiles and essentially you pick, you know, which donor you want to use. Then you order up the vial of sperm. Um, you can get it shipped right directly to you. Um, you know, you can also go through a fertility clinic. You can do IUI, you can do IVF, right? Whatever kind of method you want to use. Right. Now, when it comes to private donors, um, there is a community out there. There's, there's many apps. There's like uh, just a baby app. Um, what was the other one that I was looking at? Pollen tree. That's another one. Um, that's more of a website, like matching, um, type thing. And, and then there's all these Facebook groups, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so lots of room for a lot of different things within the private donor world. Now, what happens is usually, you know, you can post in these groups, you can say where your location, you can um, share a little bit of details about what you're looking for. If you're a recipient parent, um, also sperm, you know, the donors themselves can go ahead and post as well. You get a lot of nasty, weird messages from weirdos, scams, shipping scams, all these different things. Um, right. And uh, there are, there's kind of like this um, uh, regime of like these donor, these top donors that are called serial sperm donors. And they all have, you know, 40, 50, 60 plus kids. Um, and they do this a lot. Right. <laughs> like Kyle. So when it comes to a private sperm donor, how does a recipient uh, guarantee that she's um, dealing with someone that has a good health history, a good genetic yeah. history? Yeah. How would you guarantee that? Um, like, you so, know, with the sperm bank, at least, you know, you know that they did all of those tests. So how well, would you... Actually, there's... um, So the fertility industry is not regulated. I don't oh, know okay. if you know that. It is okay. not regulated. So okay. um, there's a lot of loopholes within even the fertility industry itself. Okay. Um, they don't test the way you may think that they do. Um, there are 
documentaries and stories out there about, you know, people um, donating who have a really intense uh, mental health history, kids show up with some of these issues, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm right. sharing that number one. Right. Number two, I mean, there is, there is ways that you can go about within the private donor worlds. You know, you can ask for genetic tests. There are some good ethical private donors out there who provide this for their for their recipients. Um, they already have them. They know what recessive genes they have that may be an issue. They're honest. They, 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 they disclose it. Right. Um, STD tests are pretty common. Um, like Kyle had had an STD test recently. I knew he did. Um, unfortunately, at the time, I, and a lot of this was based on me just not knowing a lot of things and kind of being new in this space, um, as well as the way Kyle would kind of present himself or portray himself. Um, I didn't ask for an STD test right off the bat. I did get it later, but I knew he had had one for like whoever he was donating to at that time. And there was nobody else in that space, et cetera, et cetera. Right, right. Um, but genetic tests are definitely something that should be asked. Not everybody does. And unfortunately, within a lot of these groups, the top donors will um, discourage donors from getting tests done and sharing them. Really? Okay. Really? Yes. That's, that's, that's interesting. Yes. I mean, if, you would you would assume if you didn't have anything to hide that you would encourage people to have tests done. Yes. Very shady. Yeah. Very shady. So yeah. Now, so the way they, they kind of explain it is it should be up to the recipients, right? Recipients right. should ask and they should they should be the recipients should be the ones getting the tests done. If okay. they have something that comes up that's an issue, then you're supposed to ask the donor, see if it's a match, if they have that same recess recessive gene. And that's the way they, they say it should be done. Interesting. So all okay. in the recipients. <laughs> Could you please explain the difference between natural insemination and, and the um, artificial insemination? So natural insemination is sex. It's just sex. Okay. Um, many donors, including Kyle claim that it has better success rates. That is false. That is not true. There's no, nothing behind that. Um, and so it's used to manipulate people into having sex with these donors. Um, and the artificial insemination is where they just, you know, they do their business in a cup, you know, off in a room somewhere, however it may go. And then um, usually you'll use like a syringe of some type or you'll use what's called a, um, like a cervical, they make these little cervical things where you can put it in this, this little cup thing and then you right. insert it. Oh, okay. Why did you decide to go down the route that you did with Kyle? With Kyle? Yes. So um, when I met him, uh, the first encounter we had was sexual in nature, um, processing through it afterwards. I realized that it was very rapey and he was, there was an element of sexual assault in it at the time when I was going through it, uh, when we were intimate and afterwards, essentially I'll just be honest. So he like fucked my face. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So, and it was, it all kind of happened really fast. Like it was like, we had talked about me giving him a blow job prior. Right. So when he asked for it, I went down on him and he like, he moved me. So I was kneeling and he, he was standing or whatever way. So he could like do the thing. Right. And it got very aggressive and I tried to pull away, couldn't breathe, didn't like it at all. Um, and he just like held my head there. So that happened afterwards. I was like, I was pretty kind of jolted, I guess you could say, but I kind of played it off. Right. I played it cool. Um, and, uh, I remember saying to him like, well, that was all about you, Kyle. What's like, what's up with that? Right. Um, 
he invited one of his friends over who's another donor and the i said the same comment to him i said you know kyle's all about himself here you know and he gave me some bullshit story like well you know he saved it up for you and you know it's been a while for him and whatever wow. and okay. so i was like well i don't i don't know if this is gonna work you know and and the friend was like you know just give him a chance you know he doesn't understand like relationships and how to be with a woman and so a lot of it i just rationalize right i rationalize well maybe he's just clueless and you see that a lot out there in some of these discussion groups about kyle like well, maybe he's just clueless. Maybe he doesn't understand how to have a relationship. I think even Annie said something about that somewhere. Yes, like that's yes. kind of the feeling you get. Like he's right. just, he just doesn't know how to be with a woman. Right. And so that was how I rationalized it to myself. Um, we talked about him, us conceiving in Rome, how we were going to go to Rome. We were going to do this whole romantic thing. It was what I wanted and he was kind of feeding it. You know, right, and I right. wanted it, and I wouldn't say I necessarily wanted it to be romantic, but my words were I wanted it to be special. I wanted it to be something that was a good experience, right? Now, my I was about ready to jump out of my skin, right? My gut, my red, like a lot of things were going off internally, and I was kind of just you know ignoring them. One of my questions was going to be: Did you see looking back now? Did you see any red flags? Right. They were everywhere. Right. Were everywhere. <laughs> but you have to understand, like when you, when you want a baby, like that desire overrides so much of everything, even with, when it comes to, you look at women who go through these crazy fertility treatments, right? It's yes. like this desire is, it's just so strong that you is overpowering. It's overpowering. You hear your clock ticking so loudly. It yes. kind of like, <laughs> yes. And he's overtakes he's common sense. Yeah. He's banking on that and he knows that. Right. Yeah. And so in the back of my head, I was saying, well, at least I, you know, I'm going to have a baby out of this. I'm going to get my baby out of this and I'm going to, um, and you know, and he's got good, healthy sperm because that's, and a lot of it also was he was very out there in the media um, at the time he was, I don't know if you have heard of, or you saw the sperm world documentary, but there's yes, a documentary. I did. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so he was in the midst of filming it at that time. Okay. And I, um, and, and so that was a little bit of the attraction as well. He's doing this real legitimate documentary that's right. going to on Hulu right. and would you like to be in it essentially and that was kind of part of it as well I thought that was exciting it was something that I could be a part of um so there was just a lot of different things going on um but I felt because of the media there was almost like this sense of like well he's been checked out or he's you know he's okay he's safe right right um, and he's always also talking about his super sperm and how he eats healthy and he takes all these vitamins and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it, I thought that I was getting good, healthy sperm, maybe from a weird guy at the very least, you know, and right. I would have a healthy, a healthy child. Jen, did you do a Google search on him at all? I did. Okay. Did I poked around a bit, but. I got to a point and I said, you know what? I just need to meet him in person. Okay. Um, I didn't see some of the creepy stuff. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask, did you see like the creepy stuff? Because not I... that one vice <laughs> one. I wish I would have seen the vice one. Oh my goodness. I have my daughter. So everything yeah. right. I am right. ecstatic about my child. Like I love my daughter. This doesn't taint anything. So it's just he needs to be stopped. So um, I want you to explain about the genetic disorder FD. Yeah. So come to find out after I had conceived um, and I had seen those uh, very horrendous text messages, uh, him talking about the black woman, that was, that was what woke me up, confronted him about it, said, what is this? This is disgusting. And he says it's, it was fake. I'm like, bullshit. So I, at the time, I remembered back to our conversation, my conversations with Kyle, and he had 
said that there was some woman in New Ze Zealand that was trying to bring him down. Okay. That was a troll. Okay. I didn't know much else, but he was obsessed with stopping her. So after I kind of woke up, realized all these things, I was like, I got to find this woman. So I, you know, I put the word out. It's, it's, it's not a very big community. People stay in connection. Yes. Yes. So, um, got a hold of the woman mm -hmm. and Taryn, who was in the video Taryn, with me yep, mm -hmm. and she, uh, she alerted me to the fact that he had a recessive genetic condition, mutation, uh, variant is what they call it. A genetic variant of familial dysautonomia. Now that we, we can also call it FD. So FD uh, is a very serious, um, you will find it with an Ashkenazi Jewish populations. Um, it's uh, essentially like messes with the central nervous system. From what I've gathered, it kind of occurs on the spectrum. Okay. Um, but his 23andMe reports clearly spell out that he has this variant of this genetic condition. Um, we have screenshots of him speaking to a, um, a woman, uh, another profile, essentially sending screenshots of his 23 and me that are doctored and that do not include the FD portion. Um, we also have evidence that he has admitted to having this condition. Okay. okay. And that he will not disclose it. He doesn't feel he has to, and he doesn't care essentially about it in any way. He doesn't feel he, ha right. he has any obligation to disclose. How did Taryn get the info that, that he has this? So he, she posed as a recipient. Okay. That's one way. Right. Um, and the other way was a conversation between Kyle and another donor and uh he discloses it there and we also have another conversation that he has with another recipient where she confronts him right and he essentially admits to it wow okay um now did you have your child tested to make sure everything was okay um i'm not going to answer that Okay. I don't want to bring her health information. You don't it. have to. You don't Thank have you. to. That's fine. <laughs> um, now, in your video, and this is where I was like, whoa, you mentioned that Kyle was guilty of rape by deception. Um, Can you explain this for my viewers that may have yes. never heard this, be this term before and are like, whoa, like I was. So, um, I can't claim that he is guilty rape by deception because obviously a court would have to, right? right. He would have to go to, he would go to jail. Right. But from a conversation I had with a legal person, right. Um, somebody who knows the law right. that would, his actions would fall under rape by deception. Right. So the, it, it would be similar to a, um, person who would have HIV, let's say, or an STD knowingly right. and then have sex with a person, um, that is considered rape right by deception. So I was advised that this could be a potential legal avenue okay. to pursue. Right. Um, I also, Prior to speaking with this uh, legal person, I also myself, so after I started to reflect upon our interactions and the, the power and the control and the manipulation and the coercion and all of that that was happening, I was like, this was very rapey. Those were the words I had. This feels rapey, but I couldn't like, it's, it wasn't like it was this black and white, like easy to say, oh yeah. Right. Gray, you know, there was a lot of gray. Yeah. There was a lot of gray, but it, yeah. I could feel it right in your gut. You can right. feel it. 
And so I started to look up like rape laws and, and I actually found, I, I, I myself had also looked up the rape by deception. And so when I looked up and I found that law, cause it's a California law, that is when I went to the police station to, um, file a police report on it. What would you say to someone listening to this thinking, oh, she's just a woman scorned. She caught feelings for Kyle. And when Kyle didn't return them, you know, she's just doing this because she's a woman scorned. What would you say to that person thinking that? <laughs> if somebody, honestly, I would just like, by like right. I ignore them because I don't even for me to engage in that type of discussion like for somebody to be in that type of mindset means that they have not done their work essentially they are not aware of how um power and control dynamics work right sorry my phone's about right no don't right. worry <laughs> um so I probably wouldn't even speak to them but um I can say this, I can say that, and I know Kyle is out there and he claims that I'm just upset because the relationship didn't work out. That's always what he's saying. Uh, him and I were never in a relationship, right? We were exploring the potential of a relationship. That just was, like he's doing now on, on Love and Paradise. Just like he's doing with Annie. Yes, right. the exact same thing. Now, I will throw this in there. I have spoken with Annie. Annie reached out to me around the time that my daughter was born, okay. wanting to understand and know more about Kyle. Okay. I shared a lot with her, but unfortunately, and I don't blame her or shame her in any way because all I feel is immense compassion for her and what she's going through. But I will say that Kyle did what Kyle does best and he manipulated and gaslit, right? And created some story that makes me look like the crazy one. Right. right? right. And I don't know what I'm talking about. So um, I would just say that he's out of his goddamn mind. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It's like we... Because I, that's something that he was trying to portray on TV that, you know, he has a couple of women that he donated to that caught feelings for me, you know, there so were no, there were no feelings. There was the exploration of that potential, the way I ended it. Um, and this was before I saw those nasty screenshots because I had ended the relationship prior to this. Okay. We want to call it that. I had right. ended the potential for that relationship to grow into anything. Right. And the reason was, is because when I would, when I found out I was pregnant, um, number one, he told, he essentially started to kind of gaslight me in the sense of, oh, it's too early to tell. Um, why are you like, I, cause I wanted to use a midwife. Why are you talking with a midwife? It's still too early. Um, and I had asked him, well, can you come down here for, you know, to do birth classes? Cause that was part of like our arrangement. Right. Okay. Was that he was going to be present throughout pregnancy, come to the birth, be available postpartum. Now he is incapable of any type of commitment, having any type of healthy, loving, caring relationship with another person, let alone another woman, a woman. And I recognized those red flags pretty quickly that he was not going to show up the way that I had wanted a man to. Right. Let's, and he showed way, up to get pregnant. You guys agreed. I mean, you guys kind of had an agreement. Yes, this yeah. is what we had talked about. We had right. talked about creating a family. Mm -hmm. And we had talked about him stopping donating, right? All the things that Annie, all those things, right? Right. Because no woman really wants their man going out and having sex with a bunch of women, women. So oh. Of course um, so not. I mean, just like Kyle wouldn't like her having sex with a bunch of men. I mean, yes. 
Yes, right? I'm sure that wouldn't give her any points. No, no. <laughs> I mean, she would be negative a thousand points if she did yes. that, you know? Yes. So yeah, I just knew I just knew it wasn't going to happen. And I was happy. I had my, you know, I was pregnant. I had my daughter. I hadn't found out about any of this other stuff yet. I hadn't really processed through all the details yet. And so I'd said to him, let's just be friends, right? Um, and he said, okay, right? And we left it at that. Uh, and then everything just kind of spiraled out from there. And have you received backlash for speaking out? A lot. I have filed a, so they have created a face, fake Facebook page okay. um, with my picture on it and my name and releasing pre personal information on it. Shit. Yes. Doxing. They doxed me. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I have been unable to remove it. I have spoken with police. They claim it's a civil matter. Yep. So I have, I have received, and, and, and I also receive a lot of third party harassment. So people who reach out, um, maybe asking me some questions and then negating my story. Victim blaming. Oh yeah. Lots of victim blaming, shaming, all the things. When was the last time you spoke with Kyle directly? Um, when I was about two weeks pregnant. Okay. Maybe a month, something like that. Um, if you could give advice to a woman seeking a private donor, what would you say? Take your time. Don't rush into it because that's how they get you. Um, come to me if you need some help. Um, do video calls, meet them in person, ask for genetic tests, demand it. You're not going to work with them if they don't get it. STD tests are a must. Um, and, you know, really get to know that person. What is their character like? Um, and you red flags. It's a no automatically. Listen to your gut. To your right? gut. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Listen to your gut. Slow it down. There are a lot of them out there and there are some good ones. There are some, some that I would, if I was given a second chance, I would have definitely considered working with. So, um, you know, an, another super safe option is to take them with you to a fertility clinic. It does cost money. Um, that's another option. And lastly, uh, do your legal work, right? Don't do NI because NI constitutes, the laws change when it comes to NI. So do AI and check the laws in your state, Have a get some type of legal paperwork, some type of agreement in place. Um, if you can work with a lawyer directly, but you definitely want to have um, that because a lot of these um these bad, bad guys, right. The bad donors, they will, uh, use that fear to retain that power and control and, and keep a woman silent, a recipient silent from speaking out and sharing their story. Oh, I'm going to take your child away from you. Kyle's done that with me through third parties. I've heard multiple times that if I ever file for, um, child support that he would fight for custody and, and that he would, and people will ask him like, well, how are you going to take care of her? And he's like, oh, well, one of my other recipient moms will take care of the child, the child, right? The child. The child. Yes. The child. child. Um, so he's very sick, very twisted. Um, and some of these other guys are as well. We've found, you know, criminal histories on some of these donors, child molestation charges, things like that. Wow. Yep. Do a criminal history check as well. That's another one. Do your research. Do your research. Yeah. Take your time. Yes. My last question for you, Jen, before I let you go, if you could go back and give yourself some piece of advice, I know you're happy having your daughter here, but dealing with Kyle what 
would you tell yourself? Like before I was pregnant? Yes. That's so hard for me because I. Okay. How about after you were pregnant? <laughs> oh, um, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Because you can imagine after finding this out right. where my head went. Oh, I can imagine. The thoughts I had and the, you know, options that were available to me. Right. And that you know, I was scared, but I do feel, and I know, and I'm proud of myself. Um, so I would say, good job. I'd say, you're going to do this. You're going to get through it. I thought about keeping my mouth shut. I thought about, you know, just walking away. I have my baby. I don't need to deal with this. Um, and instead I chose to speak out. And so I would say, keep going. You got this. Yes. You got this. You, you definitely got this. Thank you so much for Welcome. speaking, speaking your story. Thanks for, and thanks for holding the space for me. I appreciate it. No, no problem at all. And if there's anyone out there that's seeking donor resources, Jen's um, at is right there. So you could send her a message and um, I'm going to link her YouTube channel in um, the description box. So you, you guys could go check out her channel and thank you so much, Jen. Thank Bye you. everyone. See you next time.